Hello, I'm Jeffrey Fox, and I'm going to discuss here a comparison of schedulers. And uh, the reason I'm doing it here is that part of the purpose of these um, um, slides or presentations is to give an overview of what it takes to build a distributed system. And in the case of a dupe schedule, it has a scheduler called Yarn. And uh, so the purpose of this is to put Yarn in its place and discuss the features of schedulers that are necessary. For scheduling is a very well studied area, probably uh, not so not so hot at the moment, although possibly one of the biggest uh, trends at the moment is the importance of Kubernetes, and that is a resource manager slash scheduler. So let's get, get going, and here we have the basic uh, Caveat that all this information comes from a single paper, which I found pretty interesting. Here is the link. Please reference the link in anything you ever do with these uh, slides. And it has a pretty thorough, well written discussion of not only schedulers, but also their features, because in order to compare them, you better know what features they have. So it is a nice feature of this discussion. It tells you what schedulers do. All right, here we are. And the first, and there's a set of rather low quality tables, at least by the time I worked through them on my, with my uh, diligent um, copy to clipboard um, technology. And it has a set of tables, and around those tables are a set of comments and definitions. So the um, first table is the overall uh, structure of the schedulers. And we have here the, the following schedulers, LSF, a well-known commercial scheduler. Open Lava, which is an open source version of that. Slurm, which is the most common HPC Linux scheduler. Sun Grid Engine, which originally came from Sun, the Sun Grid Engine. Actually, originally came from a small company in Germany, which was purchased by Sun, which was purchased by somebody else. And Pecora, which is, um, I'm surprised they included it as a PhD thesis from uh, Berkeley in 2014. Here we, those um, first five are all HPC schedulers, and now we have big data schedulers, Yarn, Mesos, Kubernetes. And then we have this type, which is HPC or big data. All but Pecora are actively uh, being developed. Um, uh, some of them cost real money, like LSF. Others possibly real money or possibly run for free. Uh, some really aren't developed enough to be usable, like Picora. Uh, they have different uh, operating systems they support. Uh, most support uh, Linux. And uh, they support various languages, mainly either all languages, or Yarn is suddenly aimed at Java and Python. And there's some comments here about the importance of whether they support uh, robust access to crawl and security. Okay. So here we have some uh, definitions of uh, job types. <coughs> now the first are a little subtle because they're not actually an agreed terminology. In the parallel job type, you have multiple parallel jobs, multiple independent tasks running in the same job, and those tasks are synchronized. That's what it says here, synchronous. This contrasts with array jobs, which are multiple jobs, but uh, they're not, they're called so-called high throughput computing. They're not synchronized in a strict fashion. <coughs> now, in all um, schedulers, have queues, which are things waiting to be done. And uh, queues, and you need to have often different types of queues for different types of jobs. Big jobs, little jobs, uh, important jobs, paying money jobs, and so on. Meta scheduler is um, got multiple meanings, although they all come from the fact that you have a scheduler on top of a scheduler. <coughs> that could either be because your system is distributed, so you have different computers in different parts of the world, but they might need to be connected in their scheduling, so a job on one computer can talk to another computer, or just that um, you have different schedulers with different optimizations and you wish for those schedulers to be able to coexist in terms of an overall framework and run on the same machine. 
Uh, time sharing is to uh, run multiple jobs on a single node. That's all. That's typ very typical these days, uh, except maybe for parallel jobs where the synchronization means you can't time share. Uh, but time sharing allows you to, when one job is tied up with this, to run another job and so on. Backfilling is scheduling pending jobs so that uh, they can f run when an executing finishes early. And these are typically smaller jobs, which are just well, well um, designed to fill up space. Um, chunking is um, dividing the jobs up into groups which are, have similar characteristics and therefore probably can be run in a similar way. Uh, bin packing is an important um, technology. If you have a giant computer with, I don't know, 10,000 nodes, you need to um, uh, manage those nodes in a, um, in a coordinated fashion so that uh, Fred gets some of them and Jane gets another set and so on. <coughs> Gang scheduling is multiple processes to run in a single job slot. So you associate multiple jobs with a single slot. And this is because they're probably linked together, maybe by a graph or something. Job dependencies are when one job um, has to run before another job can run. There's usually some so-called DAG, the directed acyclic graph. It means you have arrows going from the beginning to from job one to job two and job three to job two, and job two to job four, and so on. And you need to be able to support that either in, that's actually in Spark, for example, supports that internally to Spark, and doesn't want uh, uh, Mesos or, or Kubernetes to provide that capability. All right, and here's how those features are supported in these different systems. Um, Mesos allows multiple, it's uh, very pluggable. You can put in all sorts of different capabilities. Um, it doesn't, however, the big data jobs tend not to support naturally parallel jobs, which is a mistake. They have to support parallel jobs. All the major HPC systems support parallel jobs. And most, a lot of the systems support multiple queues. Uh, time sharing we see is uh, commonly supported. Backfilling in HPC. <coughs> Job chunking in the grid engine, bin packing in slum and gang scheduling, and DAGs in all the HPC systems. So you see HPC systems have common characteristics. So resources refer to the system hardware that you're running on, which has uh, memory and cores and disks and GPUs. And so resource heterogeneity is often important because today's clusters often have multiple types of nodes because you can't, uh, some jobs can use GPUs and some can't, for example. And then you have policies. <coughs> They're pretty important when you have long running jobs, or actually I shouldn't say long, large jobs. If job number one needs 100 nodes and you only have 106 on the computer, if you happen to use always 12 nodes to run a small job, you'll never run the big job. So there need to be some policies about how different types of jobs are run to enable uh, some jobs to run in a reasonable fashion. So that's an allocation policy. Uh, and then we have to possibly worry about the actual resources, such as the amount of memory needed and the uh, number of cores needed and things like that. And we have various things like uh, dynamic, which are network bandwidth utilization and things like that. And all, some of these things can be taken into account by the scheduler if it's uh, powerful enough. Okay, now we look at the resource management features um, for our um, eight uh, schedulers, although and we sort of see most of these features, the first three, heterogeneity, allocation policy, static and dynamic are provided by everybody. And network aware scheduling is provided by most of the HPC system with Open Lava, which is a version of LSF, not yet providing it. 
So, uh, but it's sort of interesting how HPC has made, which is actually a somewhat older field than big data, has made different choices. And it partly, to, it partly actually reflects the different uh, philosophies of big data and HPC. In HPC, you're trying to get the maximum work out of the system. You're trying to schedule with huge efficiency. And if you have to wait a, a day or two to get your job run, so be it. And with your big data, you're, you're imagining a somewhat more flexible environment where the most important thing is to run the job immediately on demand. So it reflects the different operating environments. Here we have some more terminology on schedulers for job placement initially. Um, the most trivial scheduling is of a job car if a job you just order the jobs and the way they're submitted, so first in, first out. Um, so you run the latest the when you're scheduling a job, you schedule the one that was submitted the longest time ago. And then the prioritization, which means you can uh, raise the priority of certain resources, disks and networking. And um, you can do this in various ways, and it could even reflect the amount of money the person was paying. I mean, there, there's some extreme examples in clouds where um, Amazon offers uh, cheap prices for people willing to run in a way that their job can be tossed aside if um, somebody more important comes along who pays more money. This is a, all those those are actually aimed at. Um, Try to use the resources in the most efficient fashion possible, and make certain there are always jobs flowing in to fill up the fill up the system. Uh, whereas typically prioritization in the more traditional sense is trying to get uh, more user oriented, get the job, things the user wants done in the most efficient fashion. Um, then we have a case: Can you actually change your mind after you've? Um, um, after you submitted something, and there's also advanced reservations, which is submitting in the future. Um, that is, if you have two jobs and uh, one has to wait for another one, or there may be a different computer to finish, you might need advanced reservations to reserve time for this future job. Or else you were maybe at a conference and you were giving a talk at 5 p.m. You wanted the job to run, so it finished at 5.10, so you could announce its results at the conference, or show it running at the conference. Um, now, there's a lot of um, interest in energy efficiency. And so power aware scheduling actually is a relatively recent field with lots of papers. And um, we know that actually a significant um, part of the world's electricity is used in running computers. And so uh, scheduling in a way that is power efficient um, uses the nodes that actually are the cheapest to run. Data centers that are in the greenest area of power and things like that is an interesting idea. Um, so here we have a user related. If you're um, if you don't like Fred, you may not want to run on no, on nodes where Fred is running. Um, and if you don't like a job called Chris, then you don't want to run on near that job. And also, there's a lot of actually more interesting, I think. Uh, Issues about data because, especially when you're storing data on the nodes of the computer, which HDFS does, you better schedule the job near where the data is, or else you're going to run into inefficiencies. Uh, here we have centralized versus distributed, uh, and this is pretty important because you need to know um, uh, you need to know whether the decisions are all made at the Sort of headquarters, or whether they're made dynamically at the edge, and there are different choices here. Um, Mesos is more is a very distributed. The other systems tend to be more uh, centralized. Um, so, and also there's an issue of fault tolerance here. So that's actually a pretty interesting area where I think more work will end, will, it, will actually be done. Um, Fault tolerance is again, uh, as I say, related to distributed. And uh, you either have backups or a set of distributed systems. Um, and of course, you're just trying to want to keep 
keep money even in the schedule of crashes, which sometimes happens. And uh, the course is, uh, how efficient is the scheduler? Is it take a lot of compute time so to schedule a job? So if there are a lot of jobs, then a lot of time is spent by the scheduler. That's pretty unsatisfactory. Um, if you have lots of jobs, as you do in, say, in a serverless computing function as a service, or um, then you, or you have hugely scalable jobs like MapReduce, then you need to have very efficient uh, Lightweight schedulers which don't spend a lot of time on doing things. Um, so we need to know what the uh, difficulty is, um, whether it's because we actually don't know how many nodes or the availability of the nodes. That's a non trivial task because the user may be able to predict what his job will take, but often the prediction is completely wrong. Um, and I remember now I had a student once who submitted a job. Uh, this was on a very old computer called the CDC 7600, and he interchanged the um, memory use with the execution time. So it ran forever and cost a thousand dollars or something, or maybe more than a thousand dollars to run overnight. So uh, we need to know uh, uh, the. Uh, it's not so easy to decide how long a job is going to run. And then we have latency, how long does it take to actually get started and uh, from the time a job is submitted to when it actually gets scheduled and runs. That's particularly true when you were doing real-time scheduling uh, to, do, um, um, to do interactive work, where you obviously want it to run very quickly. Here we have um, um, as, as, as a whole set of these things here. Um, Table six, five and six, they just uh, tell you what the features are. And again, you will see that the HPC has more features. Um, that's of course because these are much older systems. All of these are, you know, 20 year old or more type of. Um, and um, whereas Yarn, Mesos, and Kubernetes are just a few years old. And so this also tells you what's most important, because Yarn and Mesos and Kubernetes will then implement the um, most important first. It's a bit surprising that um, data dependent job scheduling is only done by Yarn, because it's, I think, pretty important. Um, here we have the centralized versus uh, distributed. And as we said, um, Mesos is the one that uh, has distributed features. And fault tolerance is, uh, again, sometimes present, but typically for major systems is present. And then we have these various performance measures, scalability and throughput. Now we have the <coughs> final set of capabilities. Prolog and epilog is that uh, you may wish to run uh, little scripts at the beginning and the end of the job to redistribute files or set up things. Um, that's a prologue, and of course, an epilogue is the end, prologue in the beginning. And that's also associated with data movement and file staging. Uh, you have to get the data in place. Well, is that done in a scheduler? Or because then you could get all the data, say, moved from your Amazon S3 <coughs> storage or object store to your HDFS. And you might m imagine a scheduler. Uh, pre doing that so that uh, when they schedule the Hadoop job, the Hadoop job doesn't have to wait for the data to be uh, put into place. Um, it says here that big data schedulers don't have this, but it's actually probably they will because it's a good idea. Checkpointing is a um, pretty controversial issue. I pointed out that Hadoop and Spark and things have built in checkpointing, they don't expect the schedule at a checkpoint. Uh, job migration is uh, pretty important, especially in clouds, because you need to move, because uh, clouds are meant to be built with uh, in a fault uh, cloud native fashion, which allows fault tolerance. Um, job restarting is uh, obviously typically done by the user. When the job number 23 fails, you just resubmit it, but it could also be done automatically by the scheduler. Preemption is like this um, Amazon thing I described where lower priority jobs are thrown away 
or just put on uh, in Amazon, I think they're terminated. In the case of uh, normal uh, schedulers, they'll just be stopped running and put in back in the queue to restart um, and to allow a higher priority job. And uh, here we have uh, the last slide of this set, which describes how these things again. HPC has the richest set of support. And the only, and basically, um, Mesos and Kubernetes probably have at least the prologue and epilogue, but they don't yet have data movement or file staging. And um, you would think they would do job job preemption uh, to support uh, elasticity of things. Okay, that's the end of this uh, short survey. I recommend reading the paper if you really want to find out more. Thank you very much.